Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. About a month ago, I had a great conversation with my nephew, Ben, who is 20 years old, and he just signed a contract to play soccer in Germany. He's been in Germany the last couple of years uh, trying to accomplish his dream of playing professional soccer. And it was one of the most profound conversations I think we've ever had, as when you, those who have children, nieces, and nephews, you, you say, okay, we're in a new horizon here, having adult conversations. And some of the conversation um, that turned serious had to do with the church in Germany. I'm a proud uncle. I baptized Ben um, 20 years ago. And yet I had to have a conversation with him uh, who's asked me questions about church, going to Mass, and we had to have a conversation about, a difficult conversation, about a lot of the leadership in Germany right now in the church uh, that are saying things contrary to what we believe in faith and morals. And it makes me sad, a little bit angry, that we even, I even have to have this conversation, but I want to guide my nephew the best that I can. And at times when I can get upset or discouraged at some of the leaders in the church, whether they're going one extreme or the other. Today's gospel always strengthens me. Maybe I should read it every day. But those powerful words of Jesus, when he says, I say to you, you are Peter, 
and upon this rock I will, I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus gives us his plan for the church is that it's never going to end. It doesn't matter what statistics show about who's going to Mass or how many are going to Mass or all these things. Jesus himself tells us in the Gospel, he has created the church, is his design, is from his mind. And yes, he uses people, but people sometimes act great through grace, other times not so much through sin. But this gospel gives great hope. And we can look at even in Jesus' day, right? He even tells us that he must go to Jerusalem. Who is he going to suffer from? The elders, chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Whether they were conservative, ultra-conservative or liberal, ultra-liberal, everybody was against Jesus. That's what they had in common. They didn't like each other, but what they had in common, they didn't like Jesus. And so I can look even to Jesus' day, and I can look through 2,000 years of church history, it's not changed. There are enemies of the church. There was then in the history, today, and will always be. But in the midst of that, is the living flame, the fire of love, the power of the Holy Spirit working through, continuing to teach us in faith and morals, giving us grace with the power of the sacraments, healing our wounds when we ourselves go contrary to God's will and his teachings. Uh, so we have great hope, and we can look at our church history. Today we have St. Dominic. And St. Dominic, I have to look it up because I can never pronounce it. He was born in 1170 in Spain. He was ordained an Augustinian. But what he's famous for is going to France, and there was a movement called the Albigensians. The Albigensians. And the Albigensians, I don't know all the history of it, but it was a movement of Christians that kind of turned and so that they believed that everything material was evil. Uh, so imagine that everything, we're all bad, we're all evil. Why I went in that direction, I'm not sure, but it was growing in southern France, and no matter what the church tried to do, they couldn't stop that from growing, that movement from growing. And St. Dominic comes in with great patience, great love, begins to teach them, to love them, and he, he taught them, especially the people in the, in the villages, the faith with the power of the rosary and the, the, uh, the mysteries. He taught them the, the mysteries of the rosary, and they began to convert back. So God, the Holy Spirit, always raises people up during its very difficult times. So when we see our own difficult times, we always, for ourselves, we always have to say, how can I get simplicity in my life? How can I have renewal in my own life? Right? And we know it's often by growing in love of the Eucharist, understanding the amazing gift of our baptism, how they have the, we have the Holy Trinity within us, the fact that Jesus from the cross, one of, one of his last thoughts was to give us Mother Mary, uh, the Blessed Mother, to help us in these difficult times, who's interceding for us, loving us. And so during these difficult times, when we can get anxious and worried, what does anxiety and worry do? It causes us to become more complex. We need to become more simple, go back to the basics in our own life of prayer and Christian living, and to be an example. So let us pray for one another that we may have the courage, however God wants to use us today and throughout 
the days and months and years to come, during our challenging times, he wants to use you. Don't say, oh, no, not me. I don't have much to offer. Always rem remember that with a couple of weeks ago, we had the gospel, the loaves and fishes, just a little bit of loaves and fishes. And just in humility and surrender, giving that to God, it multiplied. So even if we feel we don't have a lot to give, then give that little bit we feel we don't have to get, we don't have to give, and let God begin to do great things. Amen. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, alleluia.